Hi, welcome to 45th Street. I hope you've come here looking to learn more about the Lord. It's my prayer that something that will be said on this channel will give you more of a desire to be a part of his church family. I invite you to come visit us at our physical location at 7600 Division Avenue, so over in the East Lake community, or you can continue to find out more about us at 45bc.org. Well, here comes the sermon. My prayer is that it's a blessing to you. God bless you, and take care. Let us pray. Our Father God, we thank Thee for this moment of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. The offer has come to one who has been traveling almost 90 years. 90 years. I will observe on Tuesday. 54 years and a few months of those 90 years have been spent in leading God's people and sharing the word. And I'm not tired yet. Even though my body is worn and feeble, but my mind is stayed on thee. Help me today as I share this word with your children. May your word reach their hearts. And if there's someone in the audience who does not know you. We pray that the word will touch them and they will come crying saying, what must I do to be saved? And if there are backsliders who have gone back into the world, we pray that this word will touch them and they will come back home. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the pastor who has given it to me. And thank you for the congregation who is sitting to listen to your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Again, I want to thank the pastor. He didn't have to do it. This is his responsibility. He has a right to share it if he so desires. And I thank him for the opportunity to share it with him. I'm a little pushed because I've been told that the children got to go. And I need to be through at a certain time. By nature, I'm a slow person. And one thing I never did was hurry to, to preach the gospel. But I'm going to make an exception today. I'm going to go as fast as I can. It is now uh, five minutes to 11. And I'm going to be, try to be as timely as possible. If you will open your Bibles, I want you to turn to the sixth chapter of Matthew, of, not Matthew, of Genesis. Brother Hall, can this table be let down a little bit? I see some things on here. It's a little high for me to see my manuscript. Did 
Es gehört. Es gehört. Das war First, let me thank my daughter, my wife, and so many of you who are so willing to help us when we come to church. We are both feeble and you just run to help us to get in and out and whatever else we have to do. That's why I'm proud to be a member of 45th Street Baptist Church. And I'm glad to have a pastor who shares the word with other preachers. So now let's look at Genesis 6. Verses 1 through 8. My subject is the grace of God. There will be supporting scriptures such as Romans 117 and Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. My first point in view of uh, is that the grace of God denotes a savior. What is that savior that this text denotes? I'm not gonna read it. I gave it to you and you can read it at home. There are other scriptures I want you to, <coughs> to read. Verses 1 through 8 in Genesis and verses 14 through 21. So you read that when you get home. The grace of God denotes a Savior. And that Savior is an, an ark. What are, was rather the means of a Savior? Again, we say it's an ark. Right. Genesis 6, beginning with verse 1. Ordinarily, I would use an exposition to get into my sermon, but I won't cut the long exposition off today and go right on into the manuscript. So if you read verse, verses 1 and 2 with me in Genesis 6, you find these words. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. Put a pen in that. The sons of God saw the daughters of men, and they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. Now in the first two chapters of Genesis, God created heaven and earth and then made woman and man, a uh, man and woman. And looked at all he had made and said, that's good and very good. With one exception. And that exception is God said, it is not good for man to dwell alone. 
So I'm going to help make him a, a help me. And he put man to sleep and in his side he took a woman out. Man was made out of dust. But woman came out of man, so they both were made at the same time. But one came before the other. And then God placed them in the garden. Everything was perfect till we get to chapter 3. God had to test the two that he had made, woman a man and woman. He had already told Adam before he took Eve out of his side that I'm going to give you everything you desire to eat but one thing. That is the tree that is in the middle of the garden. The tree of good and evil. Because the day you eat of that tree you will surely die. Now, they went along for a good while. I don't know, the Bible doesn't say how long it was. Until one day, uh, I, I believe, Eve stole away from Adam. And she was looking at that thing that God had told them not to eat of. It's not good for a woman to leave her husband all the time. But she was standing there all by herself for a little while. And while she was there, Satan presents himself. And uh, he sort of knew what she was thinking about. And he got in a conversation with her. Brothers and sisters, it's bad to get in a conversation with the devil. Yeah. Because he knows more than you and he knows how to trap you. Yeah. And he trapped Eve to the extent that she started misquoting the scripture. And then she started started looking. Now the text says that the sons of men began to multiply and they start looking at the woman. So from the text, man was looking and, but he was not the first one to look. Man was looking at the, at, at the daughters of men who had multiplied because of marriage. Now, if you want to really know something about a person, just ask a woman. Now, even though the text said a man uh, saw the women and they were looking, see, when you look too long, you start lusting. And when you start lusting, lusting leads to desiring. And desiring leads to taking. Eve looked, a vicious look at that tree. She desired that tree. That tree looked good. Yeah. And before you knew it, she was taking of the fruit and eating. Right. And by that time, uh, Adam had gotten there. And she gave it to him. Now she was supposed to be a help me, and yet she was leading him into sin just as she had done. And so Adam made of it because he knew that if she died, he wanted to die too. 
And he went along with her and ate of that fruit. So what is the lesson in this? Men, man, I'm a man, pure man. And, and God said to the man, don't look on a woman to the extent that you start lusting after. Because next, next that comes in line of when you lust after, you want to put your hands on her. And when you put your hands on it, that leads to a lot of other different things. But I said, Adam was not the first one to look. Eve looked, and because she looked, she partook of that fruit and, and they both sinned. And God cast them out of the garden. Now, son, I'm telling the men, don't look too long at a woman when you're with your wife. Because <laughs> the very moment that a woman, another woman works up, your wife's going to start watching you to see if you are looking at that woman. Early in our marriage, after we had been to the movie, my wife and I were standing on 20th Street waiting for 22 bus to come. And this woman walked up. She looked good. <laughs> and I started looking at her. My wife just simply took her finger and turned my head <laughs> and said, look, but don't stare. Because <laughs> you know what I did. I stopped looking. <laughs> now let's look at the text. <laughs> I look at I started in verse 2, 1 and 2, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and that they took them wise of all which they chose. And God didn't like that because he had two different groups of people. You had the godly folks, and you had the ungodly folks. And there's always more ungodly folks then there are godly folks. Even in this community, you'll find more folks who don't know God than those who really know God. And so God told them not to look too long. And, and since man started looking, the godly man started looking at the ungodly women. And they took them as wives. But, Pastor, that's happening now. And I want to say to the young women, when you, it's good for you to marry. But marry somebody that's saved, if you are saved. Because if you don't, you're asking for trouble. Because many times that ungodly person would turn your mind away from God and to the things that he wants you to do. And I have a good example of that in my family. Where one was raised and reared in the church, but she got a man, I don't know whether you're ever in the church or not. But right now, she hasn't been in a morning worship and Many years, but she go to uh, 
every funeral that she can. Both of them. They'll go to funerals, but they won't come to worship. So what I'm saying that to the young women, old ones too, it's necessary. Don't go, don't go and start looking at men or uh, get interested in men that don't know, know God. And God was not pleased with that. And the Lord said that my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he has, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. God was going to deal with man for another 120 years. And so he wanted to get man right because man had gotten so bad that he needed a savior. And that savior was an ark. Ark is the name given to three vessels mentioned in the Bible. And each one saves a person or thing. The third thing, I'll take the third one first, was the ark of bulrushes. And that ark was made for Moses when he was a baby. Because Pharaoh was killing all the boy children. And Moses' mother didn't want him to be killed, so she made an ark of bulrushes and put him in that and put him among the flag of the, this river. And he was saved. That was the ark of bulrushes. The second ark is the ark of the covenant. Hebrews 9 and, and 4. It was placed in the tabernacle of the holy of holies. And that place represented the throne of God. And in that Ark of the Covenant, there were three things. The two tables of stone that had printed on them the Ten Commandments. Aaron's rod that budded and a pot of manna. God had used all of these to help Israel. The last ark that we are concerned with was the ark of, of Noah. Eight persons were saved. Can, can you conceive of a time when the world is almost full of folks and only eight were righteous? Think about it now. Eight people out of a population love and serve God. And along with those eight people were some animals. I'm going to get into something now. God told Noah, Along with your family, I want you to save a pair of all the unclean animals. Because, not a pair, but seven rather, of the unclean animals. Seven pairs. Because they're going to be used in worship. Now, the clean animals will be used in worship, but the unclean animal will be those that you will eat. Now, they are going to be male and female. Man and woman. Among the animals. The Bible said he had already made man and woman. 
and they were to be together and replenish the earth. And they did. The Bible never has said that God put woman and woman together. The Bible has never said that God put man and man together. My wife asked me, wonder what they do. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. She's talking about what they do to get satisfaction. I told her, I don't know. And right now, there is a controversy in this country where the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land, in 16 states has said that woman can marry woman and man can marry man. But if it stopped there, there would be no more children unless they adopt. Now, there's no way in the world that the Supreme Court or anybody else can prove that that is right. They don't have as much sense as a chicken. <laughs> I, I've never seen a hen snuffing up behind another hen. It, it's, it's always a rooster. <laughs> we used to have chickens. I've never seen a, a, a female dog snuffing up behind another female. It's always a boy dog. And if you give them a little chance, they, they'll get together. Man ain't got enough as much sense as a rooster. Then this country is messed up and it's getting worse. It got so bad, Reverend Spock, that at one time, two angels came to Lot's house. And they were, had disguised themselves as men. If you read the 19th chapter of Genesis. And they came to Lot's house, and Lot invited them in. They were a little reluctant, but finally they came in. And all the men of Sodom and Gomorrah gathered at Lot's house. Said, where are the men that came to your house? Because we want to know them. Know them is what the Bible means when a man has a relationship with his wife. These men wanted to have a relationship. The whole town wanted to have a relationship with the, these two men, the whole town of men. You know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? God burned that two, those twin cities down. And the time is going to come when he's going to burn up the world. So the Ark of Noah, there were eight people saved, two of each kind. I didn't get too many amens on that woman and woman. I just hope that we don't have that here. I don't know, but I just hope that. The task of building the Ark was given, was given to Noah. And he went on and built the ark. And the chapters, the, 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 uh, the Bible text says that God got displeased with mankind and said, I'm going to destroy the earth with water. Now you can imagine what the folk were saying. God told Noah to build that ark. And Noah started building that ark. He told him what to put in it. But I told you two, uh, the, uh, uh, two of the unclean animals and seven of the clean animals. 
plus the food and all of that stuff. All of that went in the ark. Now the ark was not a boat. I was in the Navy. And the Navy had to have a, a motor in it to navigate on the water. But this ark was just a, a flat box on land. Here, Noah here building the ark saying it's going to rain. And they were not even near water. And the folks sort of looked at them strangely because he was talking about building an ark. But one day, one day, after 120 years, Brother Buck, we ought to be happy when we can get people to come and, and be saved after our preaching. Noah preached 120 years and only saved seven persons. And they were people in this house. He was the eighth one. And God saw favor in him and told him to build that ark. And so it rained. And it rained 40 days and 40 nights. And that rain was enough to raise that ark up above every mountain so nothing would impede it. But that rock, ark, uh, ark just floated on the water. And when those 40 days was up, Noah and his family stayed in there some more days and then God let them out. Jesus had much to say about the evil nature of man. Jesus said man is just like salt that has lost its savor. Man is, is a corrupt tree that produces corrupt fruit. Matthew 7, 17. Man is evil. Luke eleven thirteen. Man has a heart that produces evil thoughts, ad adulterous, fornication, murders, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, and a host of evil things. Matthew 7, 21 and 23. Now, now note in this numeration, the first two things that that Jesus mentioned was adultery and fornication. What is adultery? Adultery is a married man looking at a, another man's wife and committing adultery. That's funny. That's adultery. Fornication is single folk. So don't think because you are, you're, you're single, you have a right to have that girl you've been looking at before you marry. Covetous, I mean, uh, fornication also takes in homosexuality. And Jesus didn't have anything good to say about that. God gave man 120 years to get right. And the first offer of grace was seven days. After 120 years, not a single person, with the exception of Noah and his family, were saved. And then God gave them seven more days. Nobody came. And all the world was drowned in the water. A second point is, and I can hurry along now, grace denotes salvation. Ephesians 2 and 8, Romans 1 and 6. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Not of works lest any man should boast. 
And then Romans 1.16 said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. To the Jews first, and also to the Greeks. Both scriptures read faith is the only way of receiving salvation. That is faith in God. Hebrews 11 and 1 said, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, what is substance? Substance is an assurance of something that you hope for. It is a title deed that you have on salvation. What is evidence? Evidence is the conviction of things that are not seen. But faith expects will come. Salvation is the great inclusive word of the gospel, implying grace, justification, redemption, propitiation, imputation, forgiveness, sanctification, and glorification. Salvation is in three tenses. There is a past tense. We have been saved from the penalty and guilt of sin, Luke 7 and 50. Present tense, we are being saved from the power of sin and the dominion and habit, Romans 6, 14. And the third, we will be saved from the presence of sin at the Lord's coming, Romans 8, 18 through 23. Since we have not been saved by our good works, we cannot be lost by our bad works. I want to repeat that. Since we cannot be saved by our good works, we cannot be lost by our bad works. Man can't do anything to himself that will cause him to be lost. It's not what he does. It's what he doesn't do. If man doesn't receive God or Christ as his Lord and Savior, he just cannot be saved. So, salvation is a gift, not a reward. Salvation cannot be a works because the work of salvation has already been completed. And that God, that is the work that God does for us. And it is a finished work. That work was done on Calvary when Jesus died for our sins. We can't add nothing to it. We can add nothing to it. We dare not take anything from it. When Jesus died, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. Father, from the top to the bottom, signifying that the way of God was now open. There is no more need for earthly sacrifices. Our sacrifice, the Lamb of God, has finished the great works of salvation. God did it all. And he did it by his grace. Sin worked against us, and God worked for us. God now works in us to make us more like Christ. And Christ used three special tools to make us like he wants us to be. 
The first two is the word of God. I admire how uh, uh, can't think of his name now. Uh, the pastor's brother talked about reading on last Sunday. I wonder how many of you have read God's word this week. You can't teach a Sunday school class if you don't study God's word. You can't preach a sermon if you don't study God's word. I've been reading so hard till a few, few days ago. I started having problems seeing out of this left eye. And I went to the doctor and he said, one of your, your left eye is bleeding. And it's sort of hard for me to see out of that left eye because I read so much. If you don't believe I read, just ask day of an evil. You got to read to know God's word. And if you don't read, you don't know when God's word is being preached. God's word is not to make us feel good. God's word is to make word is to make us do good. Most of us come to church to have a good feeling. And since our conscience haven't been stirred, we go back and start doing the same thing that we were doing when we came to church. So Jesus said, you don't need to read the word of God. This church passes our little uh, daily breads, and I wonder if you read them every day. Some good points in that book. Read it. That's one of the first things I want to do when I get up in the morning. Read my daily bread. Get a good start with God. The second thing is prayer. Ephesians 3 and 20. As we pray, God's spirit works in us to release power. And then the third thing is suffering. Suffering is a part of life. We're not going to get around suffering. Suffering came, with, came in with sin. God told a woman she's going to suffer in childbirth. And there's another time when some women suffer uh, during the month. And I've had experience with my wife with that. One day we went to Bible study. And she started suffering with pain. And we were meeting at a, a person's house about a half a block from her mother's house. And she got so weak and hurting, I had to literally pick her up and take her a half a block in my arm wow. before the doctor came. Wow. We're going to suffer. I'm suffering now. Every day I have some pain. But thanks be to God. Suffering lead us back to the word. The word tells us that God is always with us. All we got to do is trust him. And finally, grace of God denotes Security. Now I talked about the ox. I'm coming in and the ox is a good picture of Jesus Christ. I'm going to read you a word about the ox. I'm going to give you a picture. I'll give you Jesus Christ. God Himself. Propose and plan the ark, even to the most minute detail. God Himself planned the coming of Christ yeah, that's right. to save man, even before the foundation of the earth. Ephesians 1 3 and 4. Number two, 
There was only one door to the ark. Jesus Christ is the only door to salvation. He's the only way to enter the presence of God. Because he says, I am the way. I am the door. Number three, God gave the provision for light within the ark. One window, an opening, a skylight, ran around, all around the ark. It ran within 18 inches of the top. God has given the provision of light to the world. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Some kind of pitch, probably some form of tar or asphalt covered and sealed the ark. The Hebrew word for pitch is kofa. And it means atonement to put us at one's men with God. And that atonement covers our sins. The blood of Jesus Christ covers the sin of the believer, cleanses and seals the believer before God. Next, God himself gave the great invitation to come enter the ark. God invites man to come and enter the ark of safety and security of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. God says, come. Jesus says, come. Unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and ye, you're going to be all right. Spirit says, come. Let him that heareth say come the ark saved Noah and his family through the waters of judgment Jesus saved the believer through the waters of judgment the waters of baptism symbolize the saving work of Christ for the true believer Peter used the ark and the waters of the flood to illustrate this point. Next, God called Noah to separate from the world, from its wickedness, evil, and doom by entering the ark. God now calls people to live a little, a life rather, a separation from evil, through Jesus Christ, he separates us. The ark was the salvation of both Noah and his family. Jesus Christ is the hope of salvation for all families. And Pastor Sparks, I'm so happy today that my wife and I have been married 66 years and from that Mary, God blessed us with two children, yes. both are saved. Their children are saved. Yeah. Their children's children are saved. Yeah. 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 Naya and Stephen yeah. are saved yeah. right here. Yeah. Right. All in the Johnson's family between Eve and George are saved. One is a preacher. Yes, sir. He preached here, and I'm glad I, I heard him preach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I'm going to hear him preach in a few days. When we go to a family reunion in California. Get your family right. Don't let your children go in there where they want it. Noah saved his family. And finally, God kept the door of mercy, the door of the ark, open right up until the end. But when it was time for judgment, the door was shut. God has his minister. Brother Spark is a minister and a, and a pastor. I'm a minister and pastor for 42 years. He has ministers all over the world preaching the gospel of salvation. God has opened the door of mercy today. But the end is soon coming. How like we, how like we are according to how the world was. God had to take skins of animals after Adam and Eve sinned and make clothing for them. They tried to hide their nakedness with fig leaves. And I don't know what people are trying to hide their nakedness with now. But there cause you don't have to look now. Because there's a whole lot to see. Man by nature don't like to look. Uh, he, he doesn't like to look. He'd rather pee. Right. Than look. But men, you don't have to pee now. And since Adam and Eve were naked, they were naked of God's righteousness and, and holiness. And they thought they could cover that up. And I want to say to, to women of today, cover your body. God didn't like it when Adam and Eve sowed fig leaves. Because fig leaves, they made aprons. The fig leaves and ap uh, of aprons, uh, apron of fig leaves rather, only covered a certain part of the body and the other part was showing. So my final word is to let Jesus cover you with his righteousness because one day he was led to Calvary And there he suffered and died, shedding his blood. Somebody wrote a song, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from our sin. And I'm glad that many of you, or maybe most of you, sitting here have been washed by the blood of Jesus. If you have not, the pastor will come and give you an invitation to come and receive 
the Savior, the Lord of life. Amen. Amen. Let's thank the Lord today for Reverend Johnson. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Johnson had one task today, and that was to preach the gospel to you. Beyond that, the choice is yours. You have to decide whether or not you're going to stay out and face the elements, or whether you're going to run to the ark of safety. The ark of safety, of course, is life in Jesus Christ. And you have to determine which place you'd rather stay. But just as sure as he preached about Noah, the storm will come. This time it won't be water. Yes, It'll sir. be fire. Will you be in the ark of safety? The ark of safety is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, yes, sir. Jesus Christ. He died for you. And God resurrected him for you. So today is the opportunity. Now is your chance. As we open the doors to the church, the choir is going to stand and sing a song. If you've never been baptized, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your own, now is the time. If in fact you have been baptized and for some reason you find yourself now peeking on the inside of this ark. Now's the time for you to come back in and fellowship with us again. Or maybe you've been a part of another church congregation and to date you've decided you want to make 45th Street your home. Whatever the case may be, the doors of the church are wide open for you. Whosoever will, let them come. My Lord. Bless your name. Yeah. Yeah. Whosoever will. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's say it. Oh, he's, he, you leading this up. Yo, come on. Yeah. Sent down from glory. All right. Amen. Many things you were on earth. A holy king, a carpenter. You are the living word, say. Sin down from glory. Many things you are on earth. A holy king, a carpenter. Say, awesome ruler. Gentle Redeemer, God with us, the living truth, and what a friend we have in you. You are an awesome ruler, Gentle Redeemer, your God with us, the living truth. And what a friend we have in you. Say Jesus, 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 that's what we call you, yeah. Manger born, yeah. The Lord a tree died to save you, man. Say it again, say it again, say Jesus, Jesus, oh. That's what we call you. Manger born. Put on a tree. You died to save you, man. Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. You manger born. Put on a tree. You died to save you. You are the living words, eh? Jesus, Jesus, that's what we call you, yeah. Manger born, manger born, put on a tree, you died to save humanity. Say, oh!
that's what we call you, yeah. You were born in a manger. Put on a tree. You died to save you, man. You are the living one. Jesus, that's what we call you. Student at UAB. <laughs> and decided she wants to cast her lot here at 45th Street. Is that right, Nikki? Yeah. I believe that's what happens. Now, she, she's saved already, but I believe that's what happens. Whenever, whenever someone who's not saved gets saved, I believe that's what happens in heaven. I believe everybody salutes and celebrates when somebody gets saved because it's that big a deal. It's, it has eternal consequences. And so today, I, I want us to celebrate like that for Nakia because she's saying, despite how we look, despite how we sing, how we preach, She's saying, I want to be with you. I want to be a part of your family. And so let's welcome her today to 45th Street. Welcome. 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 I'm not going to tell you why she got on that Auburn shirt, but uh, it ain't because she like Auburn so much, I can tell you. <laughs> I'm running for my life. 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 If anybody asks you, what's the Those of us who watch television all the time get a choice, either two shows. You can either watch Julia Childs prepare a meal. Julia Childs starts out early in the morning. She puts her peas on, beans on, so they can cook. 
She puts her roast on after she's marinated it. And you sit down and you enjoy the meal she's prepared. Julia Child's meal is not meant to be eaten quickly. It's meant to be enjoyed. It's an experience. You cannot eat it quickly. Y'all used to Rachel Ray. <laughs> you know who I wasn't going to say, but y'all used to Rachel Ray. <laughs> Rachel Ray is able to put it down in 20 minutes or less. For 40 dollars. Yeah, no, no. No, we need more than 40 dollars today, y'all. But I want you to know there are different kinds of cooks. Both prepare sumptuous, nourishing meals, just have different approaches. Today you heard from a chef, a culinary master. Celebrate with him today. Yeah, proud of him. Thank you, Reverend Johnson, for letting the Lord use you. 90 years and still going strong. You should say, Lord, use me. Use me. Well, there you have it. My prayer is that this sermon, this message has been a blessing to you. If you desire more information about 45th Street or any information you need about the Lord, I invite you to visit us at our website, 45bc.org, or come see us in our church, in our church home at 7600 Division Avenue. Again, my name is Andre Sparks. I can't wait to see you so you can find out why we're striving to be the friendliest church from the parking lot to the pulpit. God bless you. Take care.